Good morning. Today we are continuing our meditations on the Psalms and uh, using the method SOAP, Scripture, Observe, Apply, and Pray. And um, I'm trusting that you have read Psalm 5, so I'll begin beginning my observations at this point. As I begin my reading of this psalm, I have the impression of a man who is complaining just a little bit. He has been coming day by day to God with his anxieties and is looking for answers. Give ear to my, my words. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry. Morning by morning I lay my request before you and wait. Here is a man who is relentless in his prayers. But where are the answers? Well, he thinks, maybe I'm not virtuous enough. He goes through the list. He's not arrogant. He doesn't tell lies. He's not bloodthirsty or deceitful. He knows God doesn't hear people like that. So what is going on? Then he remembers the most important thing, not the answers to prayer, but his connection to God. His heart skips a beat. But I, he writes, by your great mercy will come into your house. In reverence will I bow down toward your holy temple. He remembers the house of God. As you realize this, you realize that in his morning prayers, he is bowing in the direction of the temple. It's all he really cares about, being with God. Then he says what it is he's worrying about. He is surrounded by people who are plotting against him, people whose words he can't trust. If this is an early psalm and it appears to have been written by David, then David may be talking about King Saul. Remember, that David, after killing Goliath, became the focus of Saul's jealousy. Saul jealous, je Saul's jealousy became so intense that while David played the harp for him, Saul twice turned and threw a spear at him. Fear and jealousy of David consumed Saul. Remember, the prophet Samuel had told Saul that God had chosen another to be king. Moreover, it was plain that the people thought more of David as a military commander than Saul. Saul knew his days were numbered. In addition, there were probably some people who resented David as an upstart. Even his oldest brother felt anger toward him when David came to the camp where the Philistine hero Goliath was challenging Israel's army. Others must have resented David's piety and emotions. Our love for Christ can sometimes lead some to feel pangs of self-reproach and they can resent us. People like these can make our daily walk difficult. All those things and more can fill us with anxiety and dread. What to do? Well, David beseeches God to direct him. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make straight your way before me. He is praying for God's help in a daily battle between self-doubt and faith on the inside and perils from untrustworthy people on the outside. Then he does something remarkable. He lets loose his anger against them in his prayer. Declare them guilty, he says. Banish them. Sometimes praying like that, just letting our emotions out, can be healing to us. 
Now, if God did it, surely we can. But the interesting thing is God, uh, David doesn't end with those feelings. Suddenly, he remembers the friends he has who take refuge like he does in God, and he prays for them. Let all who take refuge, refuge in you, he writes, be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. David remembers the people around him who love God. Remembering them is a huge consolation for him, and he ends praying God's blessing on them. So how to apply all this? Sometimes it can be a frustrating experience coming before God with the same requests over and over. It seems that if it's not one crisis, it's another. When will it ever end? Maybe in those times we need to remember that as we bring these heartaches to God, we are connecting with Him. He is our greatest good. It is His love that draws us near. Moreover, if David had huge people problems with people, maybe we shouldn't be surprised if we have some too. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. It's the nature of our world and the human heart. We can cause problems too. Let's search our hearts to see if we are maintaining integrity, like David did. But if the feelings come to a boiling point, let's have the liberty ex to express them to God. David did. But let's not end there. Let's turn our focus once again, like David, in a positive direction. And remember, all those who love God like we do in the church, praying God's blessing on them. They are all around us. And they love us. They are living proof that God is real. Now let's pray. Lord, we thank you that like David, we can express ourselves to you, our anxieties, our anger, that we can search our hearts, and that we know the most important thing is that you're drawing us near to you and remaking us in your image. Thank you for your love, and thank you for all the people around us who do love you and take refuge, like David does, in you. Thank you, Lord, what a consolation. And we pray your blessing on them and on the church and all those who are in anxiety today. We pray that they, like ourselves, would find refuge in you and remember your great love. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming today. We pray your blessing on all. Amen.